All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to weld all of these parts together into a assembly. When you first model in your parts in Tecla, if you actually click on any of them and you right click and choose Inquire Assembly, what you'll see here is that in the Inquire report that there's only one piece per assembly. So every single part that you're just modeling and loose in the model, it almost gets its own assembly. Now we don't want that, we want these all welded together. Now one thing that's important here though is that we need to pick one of these parts to essentially be the main part of the assembly. And in Tecla, the main part is pretty important. The main part essentially drives how the shop drawing is going to be presented and drawn when it gets onto a drawing. So what most metal building manufacturers and detailers do is they usually pick the first web that is closest to the left end of the rafter, which left ends of rafters are usually towards the knee. Um, of the building and then on columns it's the first web that is closest to the bottom of the column which is closest to the base plate and we're going to follow suit with that logic here all right so what i'm going to do is in my elevation view here i can see that i've got my three plates i'll go to the steel menu here and we have the weld command now if i go to the weld command there are a couple of options there is a basic weld here, which is the top command where you just pick two parts and it will automatically look at the connection surfaces or the contact surfaces between those parts and it'll put in a weld. The other option here is create polygon weld. Now polygon welds uh, give you a little bit more control over the placement. Um, it's a little bit easier to pick exactly the points in the model where you want the weld. Um, and this is also a little bit uh, better for robotic welding machines and reading weld geometry from the model. But here, I'm just gonna first start with a basic weld or a simple weld, and so I'll activate that command. Tecla here at the lower left-hand corner says, pick the part to weld to. Well, this is really important. I'm going to first pick the web because that is going to be the main part of my assembly. Then Tecla says, select the part to be welded. Well, I'm welding the flange to the web, so that will be my second part that I'm picking. Notice when I do that, that the first part picked is orange. Now Tecla wants to repeat this command, so to create another weld, select a part to weld to. Well, I'm gonna pick the web again, and then I'm going to pick the inside flange. So there we go, we now have three plates welded together. I'm gonna to right click and interrupt, and then what I'll do is I'll click on the web, I'll right click on it, and I'll choose Inquire Assembly again. And this time what you'll see here is that the main part of the assembly turns orange, which is the web, because I selected the web first, and then I selected the flanges to be welded to that web. So the flanges turn yellow, and then the main part of the assembly, which is the first web, is orange. Now, what we essentially need to do next is we actually need to weld the flanges to this other web as well, so that way this can all be joined together on the assembly. Now what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna go back to the weld command and I will just pick on the second web and then I'll pick on the flange. I'll pick on the web again, I'll pick on the bottom flange and then I'll right click and interrupt. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick on the first web of the assembly again, I'll right click on it and I'll choose Inquire Assembly and here we can see that the main part of the assembly is still the first web because it's orange and now the second web and all the other flange plates are shop attached to this. Here we can see actually in the inquire report dialog box that we have our main part, which is the first web. Then we have an inside flange, outside flange, and then we have a second web reported here. So this shows you essentially how all of these parts are grouped together on this assembly. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that the welds that we input are the correct size as well as on the correct side of the web. Now, what I'm gonna do is you'll see here that there's these cyan lines that are in the model. If I actually click on those, you'll see that it selects and highlights the weld. So that's what these cyan symbols represent. If I zoom in closer, I'll actually see the weld solid here drawn in the model. Now I can see the blue cyan here and if I rotate around in 3D, I can see that the weld is on the near side for both the inside flange and the outside flange. And I can also confirm that here in my elevation view. And if I just go over to the end of the rafter, just to double check, I see the fillet weld is there on the near side and then I see the fillet weld is there on the near side as well. 
Now let's just go ahead and verify this on the other one uh, or the other web and the flanges and we can see that that's all good there. And I can rotate around here um, and just look underneath the flange and everything is set. Now this is kind of important because if I'm actually going to do this for robotic welding and then I'm going to make the shop drawing and then all the CNC files for the plates and then the, the web drawings and everything like that, we essentially want this uh, modeled and drawn and done in a certain way so that it matches exactly how it's going to go out on the shop floor and feed through the uh, plate uh, burning machine for the webs and then also for the flange lines. And then when it goes through the uh, pull through welder, essentially for the flanges and the web coming together, you want essentially everything to be drawn together correctly and the welds to be on the correct side. And then if you had like an AGT machine, uh, like or a robotic welder, you essentially want the welds to be on the correct uh, surface and the correct side that'll match how that um, assembly or those parts are going to be welded to the assembly. So we're going to focus on that a little bit more as we continue to detail this rafter. Now, let's say that we actually want to put in a different weld here. Let's say that we're going to put in the uh, butt weld. Now what I can do is I can go to the weld command and instead of doing a regular weld between these two, I'm actually going to do a polygon weld this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and say create polygon weld. And the difference between this is that we're going to pick the first web because we want that to continue to be the main part. And then this second web is going to weld to it. So then we'll pick that. And rather than the weld symbol just being put in there, we're actually going to have to pick the points to locate the weld. So I'm going to pick this bottom point first. And then I'll pick the top point here at the bottom of the outside flange. And when you're all done picking the weld length geometry, Tecla is expecting you to press the middle mouse button like it says here at the prompt at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Middle mouse button. And now I have my weld symbol in here. I'm going to right click and interrupt because I'm done doing those welds. I see my weld here. And right now it's putting in a 316 near side and far side weld. And we're going to change that in a second. But what's important to see is that you'll see that there's a start point and a end point here on the weld. And that's how you know the difference between a polygon weld versus a Tecla Simple weld. Here the Tecla Simple weld doesn't have a start and an end point. And also when you click on this regular uh, weld here or the Simple weld in Tecla, when you click on this you'll see that there is a position property here at the top of the properties dialog box for the weld. This allows you to basically change the orientation or the position of the weld um, by modifying this plus X, Y, or Z, and it'll move the weld to different contact surfaces between the two parts. Now, that takes a little bit more thought process, whereas here, if I want this weld to go exactly to a specific length or a specific location, the polygon weld allows me to just pick those uh, particular locations in the model, and it goes exactly where I want it. Now, one thing here that is um, a little bit of an issue is I'm going to go ahead and do Control 2, and you'll see that my weld is actually modeled at the center of the thickness of the web. See how I've got my thickness of my web there and my weld is at the center. And I don't actually want that. Um, the reason why the input points were at the center is because when I created my view to uh, rafter view here, it was at the center of the web or the grid line here where all my material is centered. So I'm going to actually click on my weld. I'll right click and say move. And I'm going to move it from the center of the web over here in 3D. And we're just going to go ahead and move it so that way it comes over to the near side. When I do that, you'll see that the weld geometry will properly draw the weld for the near side and the far side. And now I have my fillet welds on both sides. Now this is actually just going to be a butt weld. So we're going to turn this off. We'll say none. We'll get rid of this size here, modify. And then I'm going to change this from fillet weld here to a square groove butt weld. And then I'm just going to go ahead and remove this size. If this was going to be a CP, I could remove the size here if I wanted to. And now I have that. And again, if it was a CP weld um, versus just kind of a groove butt weld that's got a specific effective weld size that's needed there, I can just go ahead and say CP, press modify, and now that's there in the, the weld symbol. So again, here's a great example of where I can use a different type of weld using polygon welds to weld the two plates, uh, the two webs together here. Now, one thing that I want you to see is that when I did this, uh, this basically this butt weld between the webs, I picked the first web first. And if I right click and say inquire assembly, here you'll see that by picking the first web first, 
it keeps the first web as the main part of the assembly. So it still turns orange. Now, you know what? It's going to happen to you where you accidentally pick the wrong part in the wrong order. And you may see, for instance, here that the second web or one of the flanges accidentally turns orange and becomes the main part of the assembly. Now, you want to get that first web towards the left end or the bottom of the column. You want that to essentially still become the main part of the assembly. So if you've accidentally picked the wrong order and you see the uh, orange part be the wrong part, not a problem. Go select the first web again, right click, and then you'll go down here to this assembly option and you're going to choose this set as new main part of assembly. When you do that, it will reassign the main part of the assembly to whatever part that you had selected there. So that's the quick way, if you do the welding in the wrong order, to get your main part of your assembly reset. Now, we've got all of our welds input here, and I've shown you both how to do simple welds by just picking two parts, as well as a polygon weld by picking basically the positions of your weld here. Now we're all done with the welding of this main rafter. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.